Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Dark Phoenix ends the X-Men film series as we've known it for these past two decades, and it's occasionally brilliant, often confusing glory, with Hugh Jackman Wolverine as the one constant, looking super confused as everyone around him keeps getting recast. Three strikers? Yeah, I'm out! Dark Phoenix is set in 1992, presumably bringing the unbelievably complex and self-contradictory X-Men timeline full circle with the first X-Men of 2000, in which several characters age 30 years in a span of eight years. But now that this series has concluded officially, allow me to explain, start to finish, the full, complete X-Men Cinematic Universe timeline. Because it is wild. Spoiler warning if you haven't seen any of these movies yet. But to be honest, at this point, you probably won't care. Let's start with the first X-Men, released in the year 2000, which is technically set in the not-too-distant future, so let's say late 2000. Rogue, Anna Paquin, Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, join Storm, Halle Berry, Cyclops, James Marsden, Jean Grey, Femke Jansen, and Charles Xavier, Patrick Stewart, against Magneto, Ian McKellen, Mystique, Rebecca Romaine, Sabretooth, Tyler Maine, and Toad, Ray Park, aka Darth Maul. Then there's X2, X-Men United. In 2003, it added Nightcrawler, Alan Cumming, an amazing opening scene where he tries to assassinate the president. There's also Iceman, Sean Ashmore, Pyro, Aaron Stanford, and a brief cameo by Colossus, and Colonel Stryker, Brian Cox. The story ends with Jean Grey sacrificing herself to save the others. Now, these first two X-Men movies were were pretty great. They launched the careers of Hugh Jackman and Kevin Feige, who was an associate producer on the first one. Really, they set the standard of Hollywood superhero adaptations. But the third movie hit a roadblock. It was X-Men The Last Stand in 2006, directed by Brett Ratner, and co-written by Dark Phoenix director Simon Kinberg. They attempted to adapt the famous Dark Phoenix storyline from the comics, but the movie that the studio ended up releasing ended up downplaying that story in favor of a mutant cure storyline. It added Angel, Ben Foster, Hank McCoy Beast, Kelsey Gray, Grammar, Kitty Pride, Ellen Page, and Juggernaut, Vinnie Jones. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! And a ton of other mutant cameos, most of which we have forgotten. This story killed off Cyclops, Charles Xavier, and Phoenix. Magneto lost his powers, but the final shot implied he still kinda had them somehow. And Charles Xavier seemed to resurrect in the body of an awakening coma patient. Yeah. So at this point, Fox Studios pivoted with a new X-Men origin series, a series that ended up just being one movie, and they were gonna start with the most popular character from this franchise, Wolverine. The story tracked Logan's ageless life, his birth as James Howlett in 1845, his fighting in the American Civil War in the 1860s, World War I in 1917, 1918, World War II in the 1940s, and the war in Vietnam in the 1970s. Logan joins Colonel Stryker, who's now played by Danny Houston, and a team including Sabretooth, Lee of Schreiber, Gambit, Taylor Kitsch, and Wade Wilson, Ryan Reynolds, but a really bad early version of Deadpool that the Deadpool that you probably know makes fun of a lot. And these main events are set in the late 70s, early 80s, that kind of time period. This movie ends with Charles Xavier, a de-aged Patrick Stewart, now walking on his feet, saving a young Scott Summers and other mutants from Stryker's lab. Professor X randomly showing up with that Jean-Luc Picard charm is kind of the well that these movies dip back into over and over. Kind of like, hello, don't worry. Papa X is back. Everything's going to be okay, and I will make it so. Ooh, that's the wrong franchise. So the X-Men franchise was kind of in a weird place here, until Matthew Vaughn essentially rebooted it with X-Men First Class, which came out in 2011. Now this movie opened by revisiting the opening of the first X-Men, showing a young Magneto at Auschwitz in 1944, and this movie showed him age up into adult Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender, hunting Nazis. In the 1960s, he meets Charles Xavier, played by James McAvoy. Hank McCoy is now Nicholas Holt, and Mystique is now Jennifer Lawrence, who at one point shapeshifts into an older version of herself, played by Rebecca Romaine. Okay. These X-Men get involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis, and Magneto pushes a Nazi coin through Kevin Bacon's head. It's pretty sick. There are other mutants in this movie, including Havoc and Emma Frost, played by January Jones here, despite appearing younger in X-Men Origins, which was set 20 years or so later. And there's a cameo by Wolverine, who delivers the movie's best line. Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go f yourself. First Class establishes the origin of Charles Paralysis as a deflected bullet hits him in the spine, which actually retconned Professor X walking at the end of X-Men Origins. Now, later on, Days of Future Past also kind of establishes Charles' ability to walk in the 70s time period, but they explain that that was because of a serum that allowed him to walk by inhibiting his telekinetic powers, which is powers that he still uses in X-Men Origins. So yeah, it does make sense because it's a retcon. Anyway, two years after First Class came out, in 2013, James Mangold made The Wolverine, with Hugh Jackman 
on a present day solo mission in Japan, this movie was also really well received by critics and audiences, although it ended with once again Patrick Stewart Charles Xavier showing up along with Ian McKellen Magneto meeting Logan at the airport, saying something like, Logan, we need your help. Neither of us can remember how the last stand ended. Charles is joking. We don't give a f now, in that scene, Logan saw an ad for Trask Industries Robotics setting up the apocalyptic future of the next film, X-Men Days of Future Past, which made a surprisingly good attempt at reconciling the different X-Men timelines with time travel of the mind. It begins in the apocalyptic future of 2023, featuring all the old school generation actors, Professor X, Magneto, Wolverine, Rogue, Storm, Kitty Pride, Iceman, and then they added Blink, Bishop, and a few others. Kitty has developed the ability to displace people's consciousness back in time to warn themselves about coming sentinels hunting them. So they decided to do this to Wolverine, the ageless mutant who was alive in 1973, the year that the Sentinels program was introduced by Bolivar Trask, Peter Dinklage, and the year that Mystique assassinated him, setting these events into motion. So Logan jumps back in time to his earlier self, meeting all the first class versions of the X-Men, including Charles, Magneto, and Mystique, and they're joined by newcomer Quicksilver, played by Evan Peters. In this movie, they fix all the events in the past and they reset the timeline, with Logan consciousness returning to an altered future sometime in the 2000s with Marsden Cyclops, Jansen Jean, Stuart Xavier, and Grammar Beast. They're all hanging out, having a good time. Meanwhile, Logan's body in the 1970s was left with a younger striker, William Hellman this time, whom in a weird twist was hinted at to be Mystique in disguise. Uh, they never did anything with that, don't ask. But the good news is that this movie erased the events of X-Men Origins and X-Men The Last Stand, so great! And the studio announced that the next X-Men movies would follow the first class and Days of Future Past timelines, telling a new story in each decade. And the first one of those was X-Men Apocalypse, set in the year 1983, with the villain Apocalypse, Blue Oscar Isaac, nearly destroying the world, with new younger X-Men introduced, including Sophie Turner as Jean Grey, Ty Sheridan as Scott Summers, Cody Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler, Alexander Shipp as Storm, and Olivia Munn as Psylocke. There's also a younger version of Angel, a number of others, but there were some problems in this movie. So Jean, already being a teenager at Xavier's school, is is another retcon, like the Last Stand prologue showed a D.H. Stewart and D.H. McKellen in 1986 co-recruiting Jean as a girl, but that retcon was okay. The more confusing one was Jean using the Phoenix Force to defeat Apocalypse, something that we don't see her acquire until Dark Phoenix 10 years later. Apocalypse also features Jean briefly running into Wolverine shortly after his adamantium surgery in the Alkali Lake lab, setting him free. It's actually a pretty great scene. The movie also features Jubilee as a teenager, despite her appearing as a teenager in a deleted scene in X2. The movie also features Caliban, despite a different version of him showing up in Logan. And the movie ends in a post credit scene setting up Mr. Sinister that never really went anywhere. Yeah, fans were kind of mixed on X-Men Apocalypse, so the studio just kind of put a pause on that part of the timeline. Meanwhile, that old rogue James Mangold released another film, Logan. And Logan probably should have been the final X-Men film. It's another standalone Wolverine story in the style of the Wolverine, and it's set in 2029, presumably in that revised future after Days of future past, except things are still apocalyptic because every future is apocalyptic. Mutants are nearly extinct due to anti-mutant toxins in food and Charles accidentally killing most of the X-Men in a telepathic seizure. Also, mutants have become these legendary folk figures mythologized in X-Men comic books that meta look exactly like actual X-Men comic books in our world. Charles and Logan die tragically in this movie, but they help a younger generation of mutant kids escape to Canada. It ends in a beautiful closing image of Logan's spirit successor taking the cross at his grave and turning it into an X and that's how it all should have ended. But I should point out that during these years there were also two really great Deadpool movies, technically part of the X-Men universe with new versions of Colossus and Juggernaut, there were other mutants, but really it's all in a more meta Looney Tunes kind of way. Like Deadpool jokes about McAvoy and Stuart timelines, in Deadpool 2 there's a cameo from the X-Men Apocalypse era mutants, which doesn't make sense because that was in the 80s, not the present day, but whatever, Looney Tunes. And Deadpool 2 ends with them going back in time to the 80s to kill the version of Wade Wilson from X-Men Origins. Another X-Men story seemingly set outside of the main timeline is Legion, which is co-produced by Simon Kinberg. It's on FX. It follows David Holler, son of Charles Xavier, in a conflict with Amal Farouk, the Shadow King. The show is nuts, and it seems to be set in a future after Charles' death, but the production design
design also suggests it could be a 60s time period. Who knows? It seems pretty removed from time. And that brings us to Dark Phoenix, which the studio intended to follow the first class Days of Future Past apocalypse timeline and redo the Phoenix story from The Last Stand. It's set in 1992, which, yeah, is confusing for two reasons at least. One, this is only eight years away from the first X-Men, suggesting that in that span of time, James McAvoy is going to age into Patrick Stewart, Michael Fassbender is going to age into Ian McKellen, Jennifer Lawrence is going to age into Rebecca Romaine, and Nicholas Holt is going to age into Frasier. And yeah, there's also Gene, Cyclops, Storm, and Nightcrawler aging into their older selves, but you know, fair enough, their recent reboots, they could age into any new version of themselves. But secondly, and this is never explained in these movies, those first four were all in Cuba in 1962 in X-Men First Class, and 30 years later in 1992, none of them have aged at all. Charles has lost his hair in the 80s in the Apocalypse story, but they're all still fairly young in Dark Phoenix. It's as if they took Logan's agelessness, which was the aspect that made him uniquely suited for the mission in the Days of Future Past, and decided that all the X-Men have it too. Essentially, these X-Men movies went from working their asses off to fix continuity in Days of Future Past to not at all giving a shit about continuity in Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix. So why did this happen? Some say that Brian Singer, who directed the first two X-Men and then returned for Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, was um, problematic for a number of reasons, including a tendency to disappear from set, and workhorses like Simon Kinberg had to step in and clean up the mess as the best he could. Kinberg always wanted to tell the Dark Phoenix story as it was meant to be told, but unfortunately, he took the reins right as Fox sold all of its assets to Disney, dooming the future of this X-Men franchise because studio execs assumed that Disney's Marvel Studios would just reboot them all. So the Fox execs divested themselves from marketing Dark Phoenix properly, allowing it to get delayed again and again, so that over two years later, when Papa X goofily freezes everyone in these movies, audiences like us are like, oh, right, that's a thing in these movies. I forgot, because I've had like 20 MCU movies come out in this span of time. And really, those studio marketing problems end up trickling down to creative itself. Sadly, the same looks to be the case for The New Mutants, a once promising looking horror-themed X-Men story, half of which apparently had to be reshot, and now it's stuck in development hell. So, to sum it all up, the timeline chronology goes, First Class, Days of Future Past, X-Men Origins, which was erased, Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix, X-Men, X2, The Last Stand, which was also erased, The Wolverine, The Deadpools, Days of Future Past, the future scenes of which were also erased, and Logan. And if you're a child in the future watching this video who hasn't seen any of the X-Men films, the ones worth watching, First Class, Days of Future Past, X-Men, X2, The Wolverine, The Deadpools, and Logan, and sure, all the amazing ones that Kevin Feige has probably made by now. Comment down below with your favorite X-Men film, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss, and subscribe to New Rockstar for breakdowns of everything Marvel related. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye. <laughs>